You're listening to Gifted with Sheila White, a podcast that will inspire you. Its purpose is to uplift and entertain creatives to pursue their passions through their gifts. Sheila White is a film and television producer, author, and entrepreneur. And in each episode, Sheila talks with gifted individuals about their journey and the lessons they've learned. It will also inspire you to make an impact, living your best purpose-driven life with clarity. And now, here's your host, Sheila White. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Gifted with Sheila White. I am so excited today with me. I have in the studio none other than the man himself, Mohammed Fahim. This is a gentleman that has done so much. He's helped so many people, and he's here today with us to share some nuggets, to get some information, and also to give you some inspiration. Let me tell you a little bit about my friend. Mr. Muhammad is a nationally known motivational speaker and workforce development professional. After starting and running several successful businesses, including construction, web development, and business consulting to attract foreign direct investments in Houston, he took an early retirement and moved to Chicago in 2000. One, the Windy City. Yes, he's right here with us today. And with a master's degree in communication and journalism, he also produced and anchored the International News Hour and a call-in talk radio show. In Chicago, he did not stay retired for very long because he started a cable television show focusing on helping people find jobs and state resources for the Chicago Heights as a director of business employer solutions and corporate relations. We're going to talk a little bit about that, get into some of these programs, how he's helping people, making a difference, being a man of action. While at Illinois workforce, Muhammad worked with his team to pioneer and launch a number of programs for veterans, youth at risk, boomers, job seekers of all ages, and re-entry programs, which received national attention as Beck's practices in the workforce development. We're just going to go on and on and on talking about this great man. He's got a resume that is just a lot of people would just die for the things that he's done. But we're just going to jump right in here and talk to him, get to know the man behind all of these acclaims that we were just talking about. Welcome to the show, Mr. Muhammad. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you and welcome yourself to the show <laughs> over here, okay? Uh, I, I, I was thinking more about what you were saying. It's not so much about me. Mm. It's uh, always been, what can I do to make a difference? Mm. I mean, especially uh, coming in as an immigrant into the country. Yeah. Uh, I faced challenges in the beginning. Mm. Right, huge challenges. And uh, after having been here for about 40 years now, okay, it's time to give back. And that has always been in the back of my mind. Mm. What can I do to make a difference? Yeah. Mm. The country has been so good to me and my family, right? Okay. But in the beginning, there were challenges. Mm. Now, I came in after having worked for an American company overseas as a marketing manager. Okay. Okay. I come back in, uh, I got married in 83. Okay. And uh, my wife didn't want to stay. We were actually working in Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay. For Allied Signals at that time. Mm Mm-hmm. And she said, no, we are going to go back. And when you first get married, you tend to listen. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so uh, came back to Chicago. Okay. And nobody would hire me. Interesting. Yeah, that uh, especially for immigrants, that's a huge challenge because mm-hmm. the first thing out of their mouth was, oh, you don't have American work experience. Wow. Wow. No. What does that mean? Mm. It took me quite some time Mm -hmm. to understand the differences between working overseas and working in America. Yeah, there's a big difference. Uh, And in fact, when I started working at uh, Illinois WorkNet, Mm -hmm. I set up a program for new immigrants as (laughs) how to get integrated into the American workforce. Mm, That's smart. uh, Based on the, you know. Experience that you've had. Experiences that I had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But my first job, after having three college degrees wow. and working mm-hmm. in a senior position as the marketing manager, my first job in America mm-hmm. was washing windows wow. in Woodfield Mall. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. Hey, wow. 
I so, took it because uh, yeah. you know I had to do something, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, my second job, and that was the only job that I've ever been fired from. <laughs> wow! Was working in security. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that was. Uh, I got me a uniform and everything, yeah. and they they asked me to go do security at a construction site at night. Oh. So it's two o'clock at night, and I'm sitting there in my car. I'm sleeping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Then yeah. guy comes and knocks on my window. Yeah. Roll it down, and uh, I said, "Who are you?" He says, "I'm the supervisor. You're fired." Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you know. I I know that you. St- with all of these challenges that you had, you talked about being coming over here as an immigrant and starting out working and some of those difficulties. Mm-hmm. How did you find the courage to be a motivational speaker in your career? Because, you know, just getting through all of that would be enough. But then you said, hey, I'm going to go and take this platform and inspire other people. Well, life happens, right? Mm-hmm. And so many things happened. And then finally, uh, I got a job. Mm-hmm. Back in, uh, you know, we were selling medical equipment and all of that. Okay. So I got a job with a good company. Mm-hmm. Third week on the job, driving back home, I get hit head on by an 18 wheeler. Wow. Yeah. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> the, the, the story turns around now. Yeah. And uh, I was so new in the country, mm-hmm. I did not know how to file an insurance claim or anything. Mm. Uh, but. I was basically unable to walk for a long time after Mm. that. And uh, I had an uncle in Houston. Mm. And uh, he said, hey, why don't you move to Houston? I'll get you into rehab. The weather is nice. Yeah. Uh, Chicago cold is going to kill you. Mm. So somehow I made my way over uh, to Houston. Okay. And uh, when I was undergoing this uh, physical Mm. rehab and all of that, Mm -hmm. I started looking around and talking to the doctors around me. And I said, Doc, you got so many beds over here which are empty. Yeah. How do you guys market your services? <laughs> and uh, they said, Hey, you know, we are doctors. We are not into marketing. I said, Well, you're running a business. So yeah. we started talking. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, Man, you seem to know so much about marketing. What was your background? I said, Well, I was marketing manager for Allied <laughs> Signals for oh. a while. <laughs> and. Uh, I know I've got my college degrees, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. I said, we'd love to hire you as a consultant. Mm. And uh, this was my first job. Okay. So they said, uh, do you have a DBA? I said, I have no idea what a DBA means in this wow. country. Wow. <laughs> so they called their accountant over and said, okay. sir, if we hire you as a consultant, we can't write a check to you. You got to have a doing business as. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how much money do you have in your pocket? Mm. I said, I got $20. Mm. Uh, he said, give me five. Wow. I gave him five. He goes to Harris County in Houston, brings back the paperwork. And uh, he said, think of a business starting with the letter A. Because in those days, the yellow pages were where you used to oh, advertise, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we batted around a few names. And uh, my first business was American Business Consulting. <laughs> <laughs> it started with $5. Yeah, yeah. And you think about, uh, you know, hear about starting a business on a shoestring. Yeah. Yeah, I had no shoes even. My my, my foot was hung up. Wow, on, wow. On strapped up. Wow. So uh, that is how the first business got started. So you, so you started working just, you know, helping someone, actually motivating yeah. them, saying, hey, what about this, what about that? And they got excited. Was there ever a time when you did a speech or you did something that you just it just gripped that audience, the people that you were talking to, to the point where, you know, transformation was taking place? As I know over the years you've helped so many people and there's so many stories that I know we talked about a person yep. in the workforce development. And tell us about that story. Well, it's, it's fascinating. So uh, when I started that first business, yeah. it, it actually, you know, after that I started American International Marketing and then Web Houston International, mm. started doing talk radio and <laughs> all of those things. Uh, 46, I was ready to retire. Mm. And uh, my wife's family is here. Wow, wow. And uh, father-in-law had a heart attack, mother-in-law uh, was diagnosed mm. with cancer, and in, in our culture, family comes first. Yeah, yeah. So overnight, we basically sold everything, moved mm. back over here. Wow. And uh, somehow I got into starting that 
the local television show called The Employment Hour with a friend of mine, Paul Cotillo. Mm-hmm. That led to a job with the Illinois WorkNet Center. Oh, okay. And uh, when I was working over there in Arlington Heights, mm-hmm. I used to volunteer at the Schomburg Library three days a week in the evening okay. to help people with their career planning and all that. Mm. And a uh, fascinating story, like I told you about this one gentleman who yeah. walks in one day. Uh, I used to have 45 minute sessions and he walks in and says, I don't think you can help me. Mm. Uh, what happened? He says, well, I just came out of prison and uh, nobody would hire me. Mm. I've started drinking again. Uh, my wife is about to leave me. Mm. I don't think you can help me. Wow. I said, yeah, man, I don't think I can help you in 45 minutes. Why don't you come to my office tomorrow morning? Yeah. So he walks into my office the next morning. I call one of my career counselors. Uh, his name was Fred. And I said, Fred, we need to help this guy. Mm. And we started working with him for about mm. a couple of weeks. Okay. And uh, in the third week, he was gone. He didn't come. Oh, goodness. I'm like, okay, I don't know what happened. <laughs> then three months later, this guy walks back into my office mm-hmm. and my uh, security guard comes in because this was the you know, Illinois WorkNet Center where yeah. it is co-located with IDES. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had security and everything. Yeah, right? you just can't walk in. Just, yeah. 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 So, Mohammed, there's this guy who wants to see you, man. He's kind of like a rough character. <laughs> just walked in off the street, so to speak, but yeah. you just can't get to you that so way. So I look out my window and I said, yeah, guy looks familiar. Bring him in. So the guy comes in picks me up in a bear hug and says, remember me? I go, yeah, kind of, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he says, man, I came to thank you. I found a job after everything. Wow. And uh, he told me his story, a fascinating story. I mm. pulled out my little camera. Oh my. And I said, do you mind talking into the camera on this? Yeah. So I got that story. Wow, wow. And uh, he said, I, found this job, mm. I was so confident I will get it with mm. all the you know instructions mm-hmm. that you guys gave me. Mm-hmm. That before I went home, I knew I was gonna get it. What was one of the most difficult times during that time, working with individuals like that? Um, they wanna give up on themselves and then you just lend that extra hand, you pull them back off of the ledge. What was the most difficult for you helping people? Sometimes they don't really wanna help themselves, but you're just putting the olive leaf out there, just. I can help you, I'm gonna try, and sometimes it's not a success story. So for you, what was that? Well, you know, uh, I I have been very fortunate in that respect. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of success stories. Mm. Now, some people just don't want to be helped. That's the point, yeah. Okay, they give up. Uh, I started a series of workshop programs. Mm -hmm. Again, um, the, the story behind that was I was volunteering at the Buffalo Grove United Methodist Church on a weekend. Okay. Uh, because I took my job seven days a week. Mm. It was not a job for me. Okay? It okay. was a calling. Yes, yes. So Saturday afternoon, I'm at the Buffalo Grove United Methodist Church. This is mm-hmm. 2008 when the economy was collapsing like yeah. crazy. Yeah, real estate, everything yep. was, yeah. We had, uh, Man. Uh, you know, lines going around the block on the unemployment mm-hmm. office. Help. Yeah, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. they were cutting our budgets. The wow. demand was going up for our services, That's and we did not have enough staff. That's interesting, yeah. So when I'm volunteering at this church mm-hmm. for a community resources fair, I started asking, I said, man, I wish we could get some volunteers in, a, in my office. And mm-hmm. uh, Monday morning, eight people walk in into my office. saying, hey, Mohammed, how can we help you? I'm like, guys, why are you not at work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've been laid off. We cannot find employment. And yeah. uh, they started talking to me mm-hmm. about everything Going possible that they could not find work. Wow. Now, my job was the director of business employer solutions and corporate relations, right? So mm-hmm. their job was to help employers find, People train, qualified. retain yeah. employees. Yeah. And I was hearing something totally different from the employers. Hmm. They were telling me we cannot find good employees. Wow. So there was a disconnect. And I told these guys, I said, you know what? Give me a couple of days. Okay. Let me put my marketing hat on mm-hmm. 
and look at it as a you know a problem that needs to be solved hmm. so two days later i called them back and i said guys i got some ideas i've got these things that i'm putting down first off i don't think that you are doing your job search right oh okay mm. uh, the market had changed yeah monster career builder had come in in those days wow and everything was shifting from paper applications to applying online yeah and there was a different wow. you different know time. Different, different time different time yeah and yeah. people were not trained for that mm. and unfortunately when people get laid off uh, they do get some assistance from different programs yeah but most of those people were not trained as to what the market was doing mm. okay so there was a disconnect that, yeah. so i put together this program on job search techniques resume writing interviewing hmm. sat down and presented it to them they said no one ever told us this wow we have been to many churches we have been to you know wow. programs that no one told us this hmm. says okay guys here's the deal hmm. i can teach you i can guide you but can you help me present these programs to other people oh to patient uh, yeah. yeah so they signed on yeah and we started presenting these workshops in Schomburg library and our office in Arlington Heights the state unemployment office mm. which has now moved okay and uh, 30 days later five of those people come back to me and says why well, we can't do this any longer but what happened mm. we found jobs <laughs> okay <laughs> really what worked for you wow wow and they started telling me what worked for them yeah yeah so that program was mm. so dynamic yeah uh, i added one more module to it on mm. goal setting Go- oh that was important okay. that's important that's we talked important. about smart goals and all of that wow and uh, that program eventually i had 400 volunteers that we trained mm. who wow. would come in and cycle out of the system they would find a job within 90 days that was our guarantee Oh my. And uh, over 20,000 people hmm. have been presented with those workshops. Now, what was one of the bis- biggest risk you would say because taking a chance like that on some people, <laughs> um you're putting yourself out there, you're talking to these potential employers, you're putting in a lot of time, a lot of energy, mm-hmm. your time, talent and treasure into this. What was one of your big biggest risk at that time that was just pretty much evident because you know my my you know. my my biggest risk i wouldn't call it a risk i would mm. call it a challenge okay okay and here's the unfortunate side of the workforce system mm. the program is so siloed like my programming my mm. funding was coming from northern cook county okay 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 i could not go and present this even though the program was recognized as the best practice at the national level mm. the other counties would not hmm. adopt it locally. Hmm. Cuz the the ego kicks in like, oh, we oh. got our own programs, man. Oh. You don't need to teach us. Oh. That yeah. was challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One of the fundamental things that you started off asking me, you know, why are people uh, not motivated enough? You yeah. put your own barriers in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is, uh yeah. you know, uh my my accent is this or my color is this or my mm-hmm. height is this, my right. weight is They this. They won't hire me. Incarceration. Yeah. Been, you know, former you know, the, the employer yeah. does not care. Mm. They look for somebody who can come in and do the job. Mm. Do okay. you have the skills for my job? Yeah. Not? Yeah. You know yeah. in uh, in interviewing, uh, mm. and I know, I know that we are kind of going off the subject a little yeah. bit. But uh three things make the hiring decisions in an interview. Okay. Take a guess. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the three things. Okay. The answers to the questions. Okay. Mm. Obviously. The other thing is how sincere are you? Mm. How do you sound? Wow. If you don't sound sincere, <laughs> the employer is going to pick up on it. Wow. Interesting. That's okay. interesting. Mm. And of course you got to have the personality for the job, right? Yeah. Most yeah. people stress out over the over the answers. Mm. Now, as a job seeker, you have to remember this. In today's world, mm. with all these software programs going through your resumes and everything, mm-hmm. right? The employer pretty much knows who you are 
inside out mm. so when you get a call for an interview uh they are trying to see if you are going to be a good fit for their team or not that's the key that's the key that is the key <laughs> yeah okay mm. and uh, if you can pass that test mm. you will get the job mm nothing else matters to the employer matter than employer myself i mean i would i would not look at somebody who's black blue green yellow right incarcerated or whatever whatever Just, yeah, can they do yeah. the job or not <clears throat> talking of incarceration let's come back to that the bonding program <laughs> <laughs> okay uh you know most folks are not aware mm -hmm. that the illinois department of employment security actually puts up a bond for an employer anywhere from $5000 mm -hmm. up to $25,000. Now does that matter the 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 thing that they were um incarcerated for or the amount of time that they spent or it's just It doesn't matter. Just wow, it's it interesting. It does no questions asked. Wow. There is no cost to the employer. Hmm. And uh, again, unfortunately, the state has these programs. They people don't do have a know. marketing bone to let people know about these wow. programs. Wow. That's interesting. That 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 is just mind-boggling because there's so, so many people. So you talk about challenges. That is a challenge. People get out and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. And these and they're not and the people that have the programs aren't mm -hmm. really promoting it as much unless you walk into their door. Then they say we have this available. We have this help available. So it's an education piece. Absolutely. And would you say that is more valuable to have the education or the ex or experience? Um because a lot of people do have experience and a lot of people have the education and you know it's one or the other a lot of times what okay. what's more important to you from the education a, or the from experience from a from a job seeker point of view yeah, yeah. again the employer of today mm -hmm. is looking to see if you have the skills for my job or not okay it doesn't matter if you have got 20 years experience mm. if you don't know how to run my gizmo like in your studio over here yeah, right yeah 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 if michael here does mm -hmm. not know how to do digital programming hmm. if you have 20 years experience in marketing or advertising you right. have a job right right automatically got a job oh wow and uh, he's just giving us a hard time i said okay mm -hmm. send him over to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and guy sets up an appointment walks in you know 6 feet 2 inches tall and here's this short little brown guy sitting <laughs> over <laughs> and i look at him and i say okay Tell me about yourself. What is happening? He says, "Man, you guys have been no help." That's <laughs> really. Uh, and what is your background, sir? You got I got an MBA in marketing. I've got 23 years experience in marketing. Wow. I said, "Then why the heck have you not been able to market yourself into a job?" <laughs> okay. <laughs> That kind of cooled him down. Yeah, yeah. I said, "Okay, sit down, let's talk." Yeah, yeah. I said, "What do you know about marketing?" Yeah. And he started telling me about what he knows about marketing. Now there is a tool out there that I use frequently. It is called as the Onet. I okay. don't know if you have ever heard of that or not. Onet, okay. Yeah. So Onet is a program mm -hmm. that has input from today's employers as to what jobs are out there mm -hmm. and what are the skills associated with those jobs. Okay. Okay. That's an important so the, resource, yeah. Yeah. So the job title might be mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. but the employer is putting in the skills that they are requiring oh, for their job. Okay. So I pulled mm -hmm. up the Onet program and I go in and I put, you know, marketing manager, vice mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. And I came up with the list of skills. Wow. And he looks at those and he goes, "God, I don't have any of those." Wow. That's interesting. So I said that's interesting. Then why do you think an employer is going to hire you? Mhm. Mm you need to take a step back and here's what I want you to do. Yeah. Okay? I said go online. Mhm. Mm take those skills mm -hmm. and at least learn what those skills are. You don't have to be an expert. Mhm. But your experience, your skill is managing people. Mm. Wow, that's interesting. So the yeah. next time you apply for a job, mm -hmm. tell them that I've got 23 years experience as a senior manager mm -hmm. managing people with marketing skills. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, I know that today's mark requires this 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 skills. Yeah, yeah. And uh, believe it or not, in 15 days mm. he was hired as a vice president at Shore Corporation. 
<laughs> okay, I don't know if it's still there or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to sit back and take a look and see what am I good at. Mm, wow. You know, it's so interesting. You know, the things that you, you've mentioned, some of the programs and things like that, the people you've helped. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned over the years? Because there's, you just have a multifaceted amount of information and programs and things. But what are some of the biggest this. lessons that you have learned that have helped you to just kind of coast on through and to be able to be that catalyst to be able to help others? Because it's got to be yeah. some kind of sustaining, <laughs> <laughs> it's a superpower or something, yeah, you know. No, no, it's, 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 it, and again, it's it's about constantly learning. Oh, okay. I'm constantly learning also. Okay. So okay. when you when you okay. when you're in a job, you mm -hmm. need to be the best of the best. Mm. Okay. Okay. And learn constantly. So mm. if ever there's learning, going to be, just... it's it's ever learning okay. because knowledge okay. is so much around us now. You don't wow. have to. Uh, I'll tell you another one. I mean, I'm not going to name names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got invited to one of these colleges that have an executive MBA program mm. to talk to their students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I walk in there and I see all these middle-aged people sitting there yeah. hoping that an executive MBA is going to be the key no speaker, yeah. for those success, right? Mm -hmm. And I let him straight out. I said, listen, guys, you would be better off using the money that you're paying <laughs> to go launch a business. Wow. <laughs> this wow, this wow, executive wow. MBA wow, is wow. not going to do anything for your career. Wow. Uh, that college never invited me back. I don't know why. <laughs> Okay. You know, you're speaking of college, and, and you yeah. have a you have a degree in journalism and, and communications yep. and things like that. What are some of the critical changes that you think that are effective for us to go into the future? Because people are being silenced, there's cancel culture, all of these things. And when you went through your training and, and all of that journalism years ago, it was different than it is now. Oh, but what are some things that can help us to have effective change in communications and journalism nowadays? Because people are kind of like, not wanting to go into this industry because well, they're afraid. The, the, the journalism part of it is now anybody with a camera is a journalist. <laughs> That's true. That's okay. very true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, print journalism. Good point. We Good have point. all seen what is happening with print journalism. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, along with everybody having a camera, if you don't have the mm. proper training, mm. you're not going to be an effective communicator. <sighs> okay. Wow, uh, wow. Coming back, to mm -hmm. what we were talking about, mm -hmm. about the re-entry program. Yes, yes. There is another program called the WOTC program, W-O-T-C. Okay. Okay. okay, work opportunity tax credits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now these are tax credits that an employer can get for hiring people who are formerly incarcerated. Yes, yes. The tax credit for hiring people who are on the TANF program or the SNAP, uh, SNAP program. Wow, wow, wow. And those tax credits could be anywhere from $2,400 up to $9,600 for an employer. Mm. That is amazing. Yeah, and it, people want more information on that. They are welcome to call me. If employers want more information, I'll be happy to you know yeah. consult with them. Yeah. You know, yeah. guide them towards these resources. Right, right. Uh, we don't necessarily have to raise taxes and raise more money to do anything. To do them. anything, we have got the money already. Wow, what motivates you, Muhammad? Because you're such a heart-centered messenger. What motivates you? Because people, you know, get paid to do help people, but you just seem to go almost out of your way <laughs> to <laughs> to to really help and and reach out to help people. What, what I motivates don't know, Sheila. you? I don't know. I mean, like a said when when I had that accident it mm. was an epiphany basically you know life can end at any any yeah. second yes yes and uh, when I die I'm going to be held accountable for my actions mm. what did I do with the gifts that God had given me yeah yeah so this knowledge this information that I have yeah. is a gift it's if a I don't gift. share it I wow. can't take it with me. You can't take it with you. You know, what do you, What would you like to give your talent and time and treasures to now moving forward at this stage in your life? You keep talking about retirement, but you're not retired, you're refired. <laughs> in life, you're refired. What What would you like to give your time, talent and treasures to most now? Because yeah. it's not about a job anymore. As you said, it's about helping and there's always new frontiers Absolutely. To, to take uh, on. I, I want to see if I can get into, you know, some of the public service aspect of it. Okay. You know, uh, 
get elected into some of the offices maybe mm. you know mm. run for for congress one day okay uh, see if i can make a difference because policies are made at the congressional level yes right yes that's true that's and, true and uh, most of the time what i'm seeing is uh, these people are constantly fighting with each other mm. okay uh, wow. they wow. are not writing laws for us they are writing laws for the people who are putting them into office that's true lobbyist and yeah, it just goes yeah others. it's crazy it's really and, crazy and uh, that is something that i would like to do to give back okay. again okay. Uh, at a higher level yeah yeah wow what's next for you we know you talked about public <laughs> office um i mean you could leave, leave the studio and a whole another proposition could come up <laughs> and you'd be taking it running what would no. you besides running for office um what would you say is the, next for you the the next couple of years yes. i want to focus on getting our returning veterans back into employment okay, okay. getting our youth at risk mm -hmm. into programs that would uh, again make a productive living for them mm. uh, those are the things that i want to focus on for the next couple of years wow yeah that's that's amazing you're awesome you Thank are you. you are awesome how can our audience get in contact with you because of the programs you mentioned um they're so numerous the different types of programs at Bruce, you, yeah. boomers incarcerate all of these how can our audience get in contact with you to get more information or to hire you as a public speaker <laughs> i mean as a motivational speaker because you know you're doing it all you're doing it all well let me let me tell about the higher part of it okay if someone wants me to come and speak please reach out i mean mm -hmm. It's about giving back. Yes. Okay. It's not yes. about uh, me having to make some money. Yeah. Yeah. As a public speaker. Yes. Okay. Yes. The consulting part of it, employers mm -hmm. are more than more than welcome to go out to my website, which okay. is the Center for Strategic Solutions. Hmm. So it's cfss. us. Okay. And uh, you can reach out to me, and you're more than welcome to call me, text me. My number is six three zero three four five zero two zero two. And uh, please text me before you call me because I don't pick up unknown numbers. <laughs> Folks, we're just about out of time. Okay. We want to thank Muhammad Fahim for being our special guest today. Um, we want to thank you for listening. If you did not hear this entire broadcast, we want you to visit our website at www.road2eternity.net. Mr. Muhammad's information will be on our website as well as how to get a hold of him. Um, we want you to tell someone about these programs. There's so many programs out there. People need help. We want you to be able to tell a friend, share this information with someone so that they can get the help that they need and so that this could be a better place for all of us. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Gifted with Sheila White. We hope you understand how your gifts can make an impact on the world. Gifted with Sheila White is produced by Road to Eternity, a film and television production company.